Let's bring in CEO and Jerusalem Bureau Chief Jewish News Syndicate, Alex Trayman. Alex, what are you hearing about a possible new ceasefire? Well, there's certainly a lot of pressure on the Israeli government and the war cabinet to, to do whatever they can to get the hostages out. Uh, rescue attempts have failed uh, by and large, and as much uh, the uh, negotiations for a potential ceasefire seem to be the best route uh, to get some of these hostages back. And so they're entertaining discussions right now. It should also be noted that it was the intense pressure on Hamas and the fact that its commanders like Yahya Sinwar and Mohammed Dave are, are holed up uh, that pushes Hamas to want this ceasefire in order to give them the opportunity to reposition and to rearm. Well, that, that's just it, Alex, and I wanted to talk about that. You know, when these ceasefires happen, we know Hamas, they typically don't abide by right. that. But also we have instances where, unfortunately, hostages are put in harm's way, sometimes killed. This needs to end. So when we talk about these ceasefires, this only prolongs the wars, as far as I understand. Well, that's right. It does prolong the war, but there's intense pressure inside of Israel to get the hostages back. And so Israel is actually negotiating from a position of immense strength because they understand that even though uh, a temporary cease in the, in the hostilities makes life harder for the IDF and it makes the war take longer, it doesn't prevent the IDF from winning the war. They understand that they can win the war, even if they give Hamas the opportunity to reposition and to rearm. Alex, we heard that Hamas had said yesterday, I believe it was, that they were not going to release any more hostages until the war was completely over. What made them change their tune? It seems like it would definitely be something beyond just being able to sort of re-strategize and recollect. Well, I think, you know, the, the tough statements are just posturing, and it's it's used in the negotiations to try to get the, the maximum concessions from Israel. But uh, I don't think that those statements are really uh, aligned with the reality inside the Gaza Strip. The IDF has been pummeling Gaza and has been really, really shrinking the areas uh, where it's safe for Hamas leaders to, to hang out. And as such, I think that they really, really are desperate for a cease in the action, and therefore they'll be willing to release uh, the, the women, the remaining women, children, and some of the elderly that are still in captivity. Let's talk more about uh, Sarah's report here. It's now admitted a Hamas commander was operating out of a hospital. And we saw those images of IDF forces going into hospitals previously in this war. Now we understand why, though, and I want the public to understand why th they had to do this kind of thing to get to Hamas. These are the animals they are, and this is where they were operating out of. Absolutely. They've been using just about every hospital in the Gaza Strip as a command center. They move between the hospitals using ambulances uh, and take away ambulances and equipment for those that need it inside the Gaza Strip. And they do it specifically because they know that the IDF has a hard time attacking these hospitals. And it's also not just hospitals, it's also schools and it's, and it's mosques. You know, Israel had to hesitate before they went into that Al-Shifa hospital because they they needed to prove to the international community that this was a, a command and control center for Hamas by telegraphing that move into the hospital. It enabled Hamas actually to move uh, its its terrorists, its leaders, and also hostages out of the area before the IDF actually was able to go in. All right, Alex Trayman, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your insight. Thank you. Thanks for having me.